welcome to another episode of Access Ability. It's a show on YouTube where I talk about the video game industry, accessibility, and representation. Basically, how can we help more people to play games, and more people to see themselves in the games they play? When it comes to discussion of accessibility in video games, largely what we do as an industry is talk about accessibility on a game-by-game -game basis, because accessibility tends to vary game-by-game. Even things that in other industries would be standards, such as subtitles, have no standardization here. You cannot guarantee that any given accessibility feature, no matter how common or well understood, is going to appear in every game for certain. While the overall industry has been trending in a really positive direction the last couple of years in terms of more studios making more of their games more accessible, right now, even the basic stuff isn't a guarantee, and that's a problem, because if we're not getting the very basic stuff done consistently, how are we ever going to reach a point where the more complicated, the more niche, the more difficult to implement stuff also becomes reliably a current in the industry? So today, on Access Ability, we're going to be talking about standardisation of accessibility support in video games. We're going to talk about some of the things that are already being done in this industry in an attempt to standardise certain parts of accessibility some of the very basic things that should really be standards by now and that we need to push to see made as standards, and some of the things that we can learn from looking at other forms of media and how they handle standardisation. A big thank you to Ian Hamilton's tweets about the CVAA, which were very helpful when putting together this episode. There will be a link to Ian's Twitter in the video description, as well as information about the discussed legislation. Let's start off this episode by talking a little about some things that really feel like they should be accessibility standards in video games at this point, but are not yet. When it comes to video game subtitles, there is no obligation for video games to include subtitles of any kind, and those that do contain subtitles are not obligated to implement them in any specific kinds of ways. There is no requirement that subtitles in games include speaker tags to denote who is speaking, or that they include an option for description of non-speech audio that is important to the plot. There is no requirement that they be of a given minimum size, or that they're presented against a background to increase their legibility. When we look at TV or movies, for example, many of these standards are enforced by bodies such as classification boards, or Ofcom in the case of UK broadcast TV. For example, in the UK, if you play a licensed song during a TV show that is subtitled, and it's not in the background behind speech, you are required to include any lyrics being sung as part of your subtitles. If we compare that to the recently released Life is Strange True Colours as a video game example, at times where the main character of that game was singing covers of licensed songs, the subtitles simply did not reflect the lyrics being sung. Beyond that, Colourblind support feels like it's something that we really should look into enforcing as a standard. Colourblind support is really easy to work on if you think about it during your development process. The colours that cause common issues are well known at this point. There are programs that you can use to quickly see a representation of how your design might look to a colourblind player, and EA recently released a patent for other developers to make use of that will automatically generate filters designed to help create colourblind friendly modes for games, which can help get your game considerably on the right track to being more accessible for colourblind players. Remappable controls should, wherever possible, be a standard, and dyslexia friendly font additions are relatively easy to implement, and as such, should really be something we look at standardising. There are a whole bunch of other accessibility support options that I would love to see become standards eventually, but for now, let's focus on these as a starting selection due to their ubiquity. They're simple, relatively easy to implement, and standards that we already sort of understand how to do correctly. When it comes to video game accessibility standardisation, one commonly held up argument against standardisation is impact on smaller developers. While it's reasonable to require multi-million dollar corporations to put time and money into accessibility, some accessibility support options may be prohibitively expensive for smaller scale projects to implement, some have argued. We do actually have a few real world examples of how this can be avoided as an issue when implementing accessibility standardisation, as some attempts at this kind of thing have been done in the past. 
Back in early 2019, the CVAA, the 21st Century Communications and Video Accessibility Act of 2010, which covers standards for enforcing communication accessibility in the United States, dropped a series of long-standing exceptions afforded to the video game industry under their legislation. Basically, video games released in the US after January 1st, 2019, that featured their own internal chat systems, became obligated to make a reasonable effort to make those systems accessible to disabled players with a wide range of conditions. Players with no sight, no colour vision, no or limited speech, or no hearing, need to be considered, and if reasonable, accommodated for. It has to be considered early on in development, and with some form of design or testing involvement by disabled users. In the case of this legislation, the protection for smaller developers is the wording of reasonable effort as a standard, meaning that if you can demonstrate that you looked into doing it, but it was out of budget or not technically feasible to complete, that's okay. Additionally, most small games on small budgets do not have their own dedicated chat systems in the first place, so for a lot of small developers this isn't going to apply to them anyway. An alternative standard used sometimes in the US worth considering is having standardisation requirements come into effect if your company has over a certain level of profit or a certain number of staff employed. This way of handling standards ensures that those companies large enough to invest in accessibility are pressured to do so, while not enforcing those same requirements on, let's say, a solo developer working on a shoestring budget, making a weird experimental twine text adventure, for example. Also, as a side note, EA's recent release of their pattern on the Apex Legends ping system goes a long way to helping other developers who want to make their games accessible under the CVAA to do so. It allows for non-verbal communication with other players, where non-verbal context messages are delivered as both audio and on-screen text to other players. Any developer can use that tech, and as such that's something that ideally should be a standard too going forward. While all the accessibility standards I've suggested in this video will take time and effort and money to implement if made standards, that is something that should be considered a cost factored into what games cost to make. You don't get to make a real world building and not consider accessibility for disabled visitors because installing a lift or ramp would take time or money or reduce profit. We recognise as a society that it's important we make the effort, because disabled people should be included when we design things. While for the time being I am excited to see more game developers and more games push to be more accessible, I really think that the next big leap forward for accessibility in our industry is going to be when we get standardisation for, at the very least, the basics. It's not going to be easy to achieve. A lot of the big publishers don't see eye to eye, and getting them to agree to anything, much less regulation and standardisation, is going to be an uphill battle, but I think it's what we need, because this industry isn't going to move forward and be more reliably accessible until we get a lot of the big players on board with committing to some standards. There is no reason that our industry cannot be implementing proper subtitles that adhere to consistent standards. There's no reason that our industry can't be looking at the colour palettes it chooses and thinking about how those are going to impact colourblind players. There's no reason that our industry can't be looking at alternative fonts that might be easier to read than their fake fantasy script that, yeah, it's fitting for the many of it's maybe not easy to read. This industry is making more money than it has ever done at the top end, and the fact that none of that is being funnelled into making standardised accessibility is a real shame and something our industry should be disappointed about and working towards. Video games are becoming more and more frequently accessible, but until that accessibility is reliable, our industry is not as accessible as it needs to be.